In this video, we visit the epicenter of tequila country, where we'll try some local drinks mm. and some regional delicacies, like this meaty chubby creation, this tamale looking sweet custard treat, Yum. meat cooked in its own juices, and a sandwich drowned in red chili sauce. But first, we see how tequila is made. And it all starts now. Delicious. We are Antonieta and Francisco, and we live in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico, where we have owned and operated Antigua Capilla Boutique Bed and Breakfast since 2009. We love travel, food, and drink. Join us as we explore San Miguel and beyond. We are at Tequila Cascawin in the town of Arenal. A friend of mine that lives in Guadalajara recommended this place as an alternative to the large tequila producers for its high quality tequilas made 100% naturally. We're about to take a tour. Let's find out if that's true. Tequila Cascawin is located in the heart of tequila country, a short 27 minute drive from the town of Tequila. We drove approximately 43 minutes from the city of Guadalajara. If you're coming from Mexico City, you'll reach Tequila Cascawin in just under seven hours. From our hometown of San Miguel de Allende, the drive is about four hours and 45 minutes. All right, let's get the tequila tour going. The agave is roasted at a temperature of 95 degrees Celsius for a period of eight hours per day for four days. Our guide Kevin explains that the ovens act as a type of sauna. The agave sweats the juices that drip down to a series of drains that flow to stainless steel collection vats. Check out the cooked agave hearts coming out of the oven. So they just gave us a piece of the cooked agave. Um, in fact, you can see it all behind me. And I'm not sure how to eat this, but uh, they said just kind of chew it and spit out the fibers after. I don't know. Here we go. Mmm. Ooh. It's so sweet. It almost tastes like sweet potato. And it's very, very sweet and very pleasant. I actually, I actually like it. <laughs> it's good. Kevin explains that they extract the agave juices by two methods. The first method is the circular old-fashioned mill with a round stone called daona, a stone that was used years ago to grind agave, resulting in more complex aromas and flavors. The yield is smaller, but the final product is a higher quality, more flavorful tequila. The daona mill is used only for one type of cascawin tequila called cascawin daona. The second and most common method is the modern mill. First, the cooked agave is placed on a belt that sends it to a shredder. The shredded agave is then sent to one of the two juice extractors. From there, all of the liquid is collected in vats and from there is transferred to a series of fermentation vessels depending on the type of tequila. Most of the remaining fibers are used for compost and some are used to help in the fermentation of certain type of tequilas. Next, we're off to the fermentation area. All of the fermentation is done in open tanks with natural yeast collected from the local air. When fermentation is finished, the liquid is transferred to the distillation room where the alcohol is collected. The tequila that is collected at this point is around 50% alcohol. It is adjusted by adding purified water to lower the alcohol content to somewhere between 42 and 46%. From here, some of the tequila goes to casks for aging. In the case of the Blancos, tequila is sent to glass containers for bottling. Kevin explains that the different tequilas are aged for different periods of time. Reposado for 6 to 8 months, Añejo for 14 to 16 months, and Extra Añejo for 4 years. 80% of the barrels used here are recycled whiskey barrels from Jack Daniels. The other 20 are from other whiskey producers. These barrels are reused forever. 
After the aging process is complete, the tequila is transferred to these large wooden containers to stabilize the flavors. Reposado en añejo for one month, and extra añejo for four additional years. That's a total of eight years. This final step is optional, and the people at Tequila Cascawin take this step because they believe that it rounds out the flavors of their tequilas. From here, it's off to bottling. All right, so we've reached the point of the tour where we sit down and get to taste some fabulous tequilas. We've got in front of us six different tequilas that we're gonna try from the Blanco. It's after fermentation ready in three months. And then we're gonna end with the Extra Añejo, which is aged in oak barrels for a minimum of four years. We've already actually gone through all of these. The Blanco was really delicious. I mean, it would be sacrilege to make margaritas out of these. Some people do, and you might as well use a good product if you're going to make a margarita. Why, why not use a Casca Win Blanco? But for me, I really enjoyed just tasting it straight. And it's a sipper. These are actually sipping tequilas. You just drink little by little, savor them and enjoy them, and uh, you take your time drinking them. Kevin, our guide here, was very informative. I highly recommend if you come out to this region to visit Tequila Cascawin and, and ask for Kevin. He'll give you a personalized tour in English or in Spanish. I'm gonna go ahead and try this Extra Añejo, aged four years in oak barrels. One thing that I learned today, you gotta hold your breath. You have to hold your breath, take a sip, savor it, swallow and exhale. So this is how you do it. You hold your breath. You exhale. Delicious. Cheers. So we finished up our tour and we tried lots of really good tequila, but now we need to eat. We're about to try some gorditas here at the roadside restaurant. It's the first restaurant we found and we'll see what happens. She called them embarazada, which means a pregnant woman. And I got picadillo, which is ground beef with potato and seasoning and there's like a, a gordita on the bottom I think it has cheese inside I'll have to try and let you know I'm not sure but I need a fork first and mine is the same thing but with a little bit of pork skin and a little bit of the meat that's attached to it so good okay so we're done with our snack and off we go to tequila Founded in 1530 by Franciscan friars, the city of Tequila in the Mexican state of Jalisco is approximately a one-hour drive from the city center of Guadalajara. For us, the city of Tequila is just a half-hour drive from Tequila Cascawin in the town of Arenal. The city of Tequila is ground zero for Mexico's most famous distilled beverage. And we're gonna drink and eat our way through the town. All right, so I just purchased a drink called Tejuino. It's made out of fermented mace, lime, sugar, and salt. Mm. It's really refreshing. It's super hot out right now. I'm not sure how hot it is. Probably in the 90s. And this is this is a nice drink to drink today. <laughs> There's lots to see in tequila. Take these guys, for instance. Known as voladores, which means flyers in Spanish, this ritual is believed to have originated with the Nahua, Huastec, and Otomi peoples in central Mexico. Today, this ritual known as the Dance of the Flyers is associated with the Totonac people in the state of Veracruz. According to legend, the dance was created 450 years ago to ask the gods to end the severe drought. Okay, so she said this is called colado de lote, made out of milk, sugar, and cinnamon, and corn. Looks like a tamal, but it's not a tamal. Okay, it was nothing. Oh, it smells really good. I can smell the cinnamon. 
Yum. It's like a pudding. Like a corn cinnamon pudding. That's what it tastes like. And it's not too sweet at all. Okay, so I'm drinking a cantarito, which is the vessel itself. And it's got grapefruit juice, orange juice, lime juice, salt, squirt, which is soda, and tequila, of course. We are in tequila. Let's see. Of course, it's delicious. Very refreshing, sweet. I don't taste a lot of tequila, so it's actually very good. Yum. Okay, my turn. Mmm. are at a restaurant called La Antigua Casona and I ordered carne en su jugo. It's the most emblematic dish of the state of Jalisco. It's basically a stew of beef cooked in chicken broth and lime and other goodies. And it comes with a side of veggies, which I'm going to add. Mm, that's really good. I forgot to mention it also has bacon. And I've got some tortillas here, so what I'm going to do is pick me up a little taco. It's going to be tricky to eat. Wow, the combination of the stew with the tortilla in the form of a taco, the best. Okay, so I'm having a torta ahogada, which is a drowned sandwich. And it is pork meat on the inside, a tomato sauce, and the bread is like a burrito, but they call it a pirote here. So, let's give it a try. Mm. Oh, it's really good. The bread is soft, but not too soft. And it soaked up a lot of the tomato sauce. And the pork inside is really tasty. And it's got some pickled onions on here too. Okay, so we're having a jericaya, or their version of a jericaya, because it's pretty fancy looking. So, I don't know, let's see. Uh, knock this guy over, break this in half. I'm gonna get a little bit of this. With the custard underneath. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's so good. Mm, this is like a hazelnut, like an ice cream or a praline. And there's a egg custard inside here. Oh my god. I just to die for it. More good. Okay, so we have finished our meal here at La Antigua Casona and we would highly recommend this place. The food was really good, the prices are reasonable, and there's air conditioning inside of here. <laughs> and it is so hot outside, it feels just right in here. It's just a nice little place to relax and uh, get off your feet and rest for a little bit. Next, we're off to Guadalajara, so stay tuned for our next video. We will be checking out the sights and eating yummy, delicious food. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified when our next video goes live.